We will continue with our uh, last but not least uh, presentation and finally we will get some private sector perspective into all of this. Uh, I'm welcoming to the stage Mr. Oliver Vartno. Um, this is going to be a long uh, list of what he is and does. Um, Mr. Vartno is the chairman of the management board at a company called Cybernetica. Uh, this is a research development intensive ICT company that develops and sells machine and critical software systems, products, maritime surveillance, and radio communications uh, solutions. Cybernetica has been active, uh, has been an active counterpart in um, developing Estonian critical e-government systems, uh, such as the X-Road, the iVoting, the e-customs, and uh, others. And the company Cybernetica is also a founding member of the Estonian Information Security Association which is founded to boost cross-sectorial cooperation in Estonia between academia and the private sector, as well as the government. Oh. Um, the stage is yours, Mr. Vardlo. Thank you, Lauri, uh, for this uh, short introduction. I appreciate it. Ladies and gentlemen, as I was walking here, I thought, uh, what a wonderful world we have created for ourselves. Um, uh, you don't have to go to get on an airplane to come here to Estonia to listen to a long conference on uh, on cybersecurity. Instead, you can you can stay at home, um, tuck into your um, chair, and listen listen us over here in Estonia. Um, no harms in in driving. No harms in flying anywhere. Although I personally uh, quite like also uh, flying and see other other places and 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 other cultures. As Lauri said, I'm Oliver Wertner and I'm uh, the CEO of Cybernetica and I'm also, um, we are also one of the founding members of the Estonian Information Security Association. And I have to start with a disclaimer here. Um, the Estonian cybersecurity industry formulated this association a couple of years ago with basically three aims. Uh, one, our main aim was actually to link the companies closer to to Brussels and to what is happening in the core of Europe and how we can actually engage in these discussions about cybersecurity and how Europe uh, should protect its infrastructure and actually how Estonian companies and, this, and how Estonia um, could um, make an impact in these discussions. But we also promised to be the partner for the Estonian government in formulating our local cybersecurity ecosystem here in Estonia and also to mediate or to exchange best practices um, between the Estonian companies on how to grow um, and basically how to exchange or uh, exchange information between each other. And I will come back to the European point at the very, uh, at the very end of my presentation. But uh, going forther, forward, what has changed? Uh, this is a graph uh, that I picked up from the New York Times. Um, which basically states that uh, in the early March, we all of a sudden had a lot of Zoom super users and Google Classroom users and Microsoft Team users. Basically, what happened in the world is during, due to this COVID-19 virus, a lot of the people, millions of people, were told to stay at home and work from home, which pushed up um, a lot of the uses of the IT infrastructure in the world. And mainly uh, the uses of these companies that were offering software as a service for working from home, either it's teleconferencing systems, VPNs for connecting to the infrastructures, etc., etc. Also what happened is that people all of a sudden acknowledge that they don't have the tools to work from home. Um, I've had various discussions with top politicians in Europe who actually, or let's say European parliament, uh, members of the parliament who said that we don't have the tools actually to work peacefully at home. We don't have the digital signatures, we don't have the secure authentic authentication mechanisms, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, to run our, our daily lives as if nothing had happened. And I guess here we have something um, here in Estonia which, can, which we can actually teach to the world as well. We have actually 
made a lot of our activities here in the Estonia online. You can do, you can vote online, you can do all your contracting online, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But you don't have this infrastructure anywhere, or not anywhere, but in most of the places in the world. Another graph that I picked from from the New Yorker, which says, relax, it's all online when a dog is eating the books of, the, of his master, is that when things are online, you should actually attack the things um, that are online instead of attacking the physical infrastructures or, or playing with the physical infrastructures. My previous speakers here um, on the stage actually highlighted what has happened. We have had a lot of phishing campaigns. We've had uh, directed hackings due to this. We have had um, people dropping in our Zoom calls, etc., etc. When the world has moved digital, a lot of the activities of also the adversaries have also become digital. And this is something that is the new reality, so to say. When I look at it from the industry perspective, I see two maybe fundamental um, things that are happening. In the short run, as I mentioned, the cybersecurity service business is growing a lot. Um, we have the companies that are growing uh, do a lot uh, on incident analysis, uh, incident response, threat intelligence, all these kind of capabilities that are already existing in the market today. They are just being more active. They, need to, they just need to sell their service more or they don't even need to sell their service because everybody is online and everybody is getting some kind of attacks or plays or, or mingling with their infrastructure. When we look at the, the long term um, of this situation where we are today, I think um, we'll have maybe two, or we'll have a couple of things that are happening. First of all, what I see is that a lot of the governments today are thinking they need to go digital. They are looking at uh, the new world. They see that they need to have their critical infrastructures in place. However, what I also see is that currently they are very, very cautious on making these investments. Um, I think it was the, the first uh, presenter actually who said that uh, um, we need to keep up these investments into the infrastructure in order to, to be in the game. I see that a lot of the governments are actually looking currently, okay, we need to go digital, but um, let's take a step back here. Let's see how big is this crisis. Uh, let's see when we feel the bottom and then when there is the bottom, we can actually start making some investments into critical technologies, critical IT technologies. I personally believe that this time of investment is going to be at the second part of 2021. I think uh, we haven't seen the bottom of this crisis and I think uh, economically we're going to have pretty tough times. First countries most probably have to cut a little bit before they can start investing. Now when we get to the investment phase, I see quite fundamental competition. Um, I think there, all of the big regions, Europe, US, China, uh, maybe Japan, are starting to look into creating these digital infrastructures by themselves, uh, making these investments and pushing this into the domains, um, into other third uh, world countries um, who are kind of being uh, made dependent. 5G was a lot talked about here, but national digital identity, whether it comes from China, Europe or US, probably has some implication for the country. So I would see a lot of competition. And um, I also see that for an Estonian industry and, and for a country like Estonia, who has this legacy of IT systems 
for maybe 20 years now or so who has built their core systems on on certain values and decisions etc needs to be very actively engaged in in these discussions that are happening in brussels um, or the discussions that are are happening in the European level on how Europe defines its uh, cybersecurity, but also digital um, IT infrastructure. This is fundamental. I bet that the next financial um, MFF, uh, multi uh, financial framework in Europe, will have a very, very strong focus on digital, um, in addition, maybe, to uh, environmental. And at the last point, I want to say that let's hope that the next crisis is not going to be caused by, for example, a magnetic pulse from the sun. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, this is, uh, I hope so too. Uh, <laughs> at, that uh, this is uh, this is a little bit, yeah. I, I had never thought of that, um, uh, but okay. Um, I do have a question for you before you go. Um, most business deals in general, like you said, are actually, um, you know, conducted uh, via private meetings. Um, right now you are able to join us, of course, through this, uh, you know, digital way, but a lot of business goes on and a lot of these uh, business contracts are being still signed by CEOs who fly over to another country, they go out to a restaurant, they conclude the, the business deal and then they sign it. How do you feel um, seeing that travel restrictions are going to be in place for a little while now? You know, larger or smaller travel restrictions. How do you see this affecting business practices, uh, digital signatures, um, and, you know, general business practices mm -hmm. in your field, uh, in the, you know, in the, f the, the future, that, uh, w the foreseeable future? I think there's, uh, actually, the fundamental thing is not uh, about traveling. The, uh, the fundamental thing is actually about certainty. People are not really making today investments because they are not feeling safe about the economic environment that is uh, around them. And I think when this uh, environment actually um, kind of stabilizes and starts to pick up, it really doesn't matter uh, whether you can fly um, to, the, to meet the, your counterpart and sign the contract or not. Um, of course, it helps. And, I, and I, I personally predict that when the world opens, everybody is going to travel like crazy because you need to re-establish your contacts. But the fundamental problem, I think, today in, in getting the deals is just the uh, uncertainty. Even the governments, they are not uh, willing to make the investments unless really, really pushed into this direction over some kind of a long-term financial commitment that they have made, etc. And um, also, you know, the culture also very uh, change. The culture also matters a lot. You know, in in Japan, you have to go there. You have to drink a lot of sake to get a contract. Um, in the United States, maybe it's not so much, you know. And in regards to the digital um, signatures, um, of course, uh, I mean, um, there is an issue with all the, um, with, with the signing of the contracts. I mean, in, here in Estonia, we are, we are so lucky and actually... Um, um, convenient that uh, or we have we have this very convenient situation that I'm signing or uh, sending around digital contracts and don't have to ever you know send a DHL or anything like that but uh, in most of the places where we do business we still have to si sign contracts physically send them over and uh, yeah wait for a return <laughs> thank you thank you